My name is Rodney Falk. I'm the director of the Brigham and Women's Hospital Amyloidosis Program. Over the past two or three years, we've seen more and more complex patients with more and more aspects of amyloidosis. So recently we have expanded the concept of our program to become a amyloidosis program in general and not specifically concentrating on the heart. Amyloidosis is a group of diseases they have the common feature that an abnormal protein, or in some cases a normal protein, behaves abnormally, and the breakdown products from this protein fold upon themselves and deposit in various organs. But cardiac amyloidosis is obviously when the amyloid deposits in the heart. And when it does so, it stiffens the heart, it makes it difficult for the heart to relax, and the patient will develop a number of symptoms including congestive heart failure and cardiac arrhythmias. The two main types of amyloidosis, one is a blood-related disease related to a disorder called multiple myeloma, in which abnormal cells called plasma cells produce an abnormal protein and that causes damage to multiple organs. There are probably some three to 5,000 new cases a year in the United States of that type of amyloid, and that's the so-called AL, or light chain amyloid. The other main type of amyloid that we see is where the protein is called transthyretin, or we abbreviate it to TTR, and that has a hereditary form and a non-hereditary form. The hereditary form, it turns out, that almost 4% of African Americans carry the gene for this and are at risk of developing heart failure later in life. So that is not uncommon. The non-hereditary TTR is a disorder predominantly of older men, men in their 70s upwards, that was originally considered to be very rare, and now we realize that it is far commoner than previously thought and may actually be responsible for up to 10% of patients who have heart failure due to a stiff heart with a normal pumping function. Familial amyloidosis may be seen in patients as young as 30, usually presenting with nerve damage, but generally for the uh, light chain amyloid, the average age is 50s to 60s. The African American population tend to be in their 60s and 70s and the TTR amyloid that is the so-called wild type or is not associated with a mutation is seen in the late 60s upwards. For the patients who have familial amyloid, it is important for them to let their family know and not to keep it some sort of secret because we can easily screen family members to see if they carry the gene. If they don't, they're off the hook. If they do, then there are measures now which almost certainly will either slow the progression of the disease if they ever develop it, or perhaps even prevent them from getting it.